This first question is asking what the challenges are associated with creating a parallel computing solution. Basically, when it comes to parallel solutions, there's really one strict requirement, and that is that you can break up tasks into small independent tasks. If you can do that, you can make it into a parallel solution. So what does it mean to break up a task into small independent tasks? Let's take this example. Let's say you work for a school and what your job is is to take a bunch of exams, let's say a, a thousand exams, and your job is to count them. You want to count all of the scores. So one thing you could do is you could take all 1,000 and count them yourselves. Or maybe you could reach out to five friends and each of those friends can count 200 of them. And you all split up the task into different parts so you can each count 200. And then once you get the totals for each of those, you add them all together and that is the sum. So notice that if it takes a long time to count each score, this divides it up into five parts, though at the end you will still have to add them all up. More on that in the next problem. This is an example of a problem that can be broken up into small independent tasks because each one of these tasks can be done without caring about what the other tasks are doing. I can count these 200 independently of this person right here. I might count them really quickly. They might take a lot longer. But either way, I don't rely on their count in order for me to count my own. Let's look at a problem that doesn't have this property. Let's say that you have a problem that what it's really doing is just performing a set of equations on a number. Like maybe you have the number 100 here, and what your formula does is it's going to take that number and first it's going to add 20 to it. So that 100 plus 20, and then it's going to divide it by two. So maybe the result divided by two, and then once you do that, maybe we're going to take that result and we're going to add 30 to it. And that's our final answer, right? Now notice that each of these steps right here is going to require the answer to the previous step. So this one needs the input of 100, this one here needs the answer to the previous part, and this one here needs the answer to this previous part. So basically every step of these is non-independent. It can't really be broken down on its own because it requires that we first solve the previous steps. That's why this one is sequential like this. There's no way to make each of these steps independent because they can only be done as long as they have the answer to the previous step. So this is one example of a task that cannot be parallelized. So in short, a parallel computing solution may not be appropriate for an algorithm in which each step requires the output from the preceding step. Those are not parallelizable solutions because they cannot be broken down into independent tasks. Note, by the way, that all of the other answers are describing some of the other requirements. So for example, the same formula is applied to many numeric data elements. So if you're applying the same formula without requiring data from the other responses, then it's the same formula. That's something that you can split up. This one here, C, is talking about something which can be easily broken down into independent tasks. As we described, that's another property of a parallel algorithm. And finally, parallel computing solution may not be appropriate for an algorithm that searches for occurrences of keyword in a large number of documents. So this is something you can think of where you could easily break that up. You could split up that document and look for that keyword none of the answers to each of those individual problems requires a previous one. So that's a good example of something which can be broken down. So therefore the answer to this is A. Let's look at some more stuff about parallel algorithms. The question first is asking which of the following best describes the ability for parallel computing solutions to improve efficiency? So again it's kind of asking about parallel computing in general. The first one we see here says any problem can be solved sequentially, can be solved using a parallel solution in approximately half the time. So there's a couple things wrong with this one. And the most important thing that's wrong with this one is that first part right here, which is any problem that can be solved sequentially can be solved using a parallel solution. We actually just showed an example that disproves that in the last one, where we showed a case where there's something that requires the answer to previous problems, and because of that, it can't, those aren't independent and they can't be made into parallel solution. The other thing that's kind of wrong about this is that Approximately half the time isn't always the case, as we'll see later with speed up. Speed up doesn't have to be half the time. In fact, sometimes you don't actually make it twice as fast by doubling the amount of work that you have. So as such, 
A is not correct. B says any solution can be broken down into smaller and smaller parallel problems, making improvement and efficiency theoretically limitless as long as there's enough processors. So we already disproved this in the previous one by saying that not every solution can be broken down. We already gave a counterexample. Finally, the efficiency of parallel computing solutions is rarely improved over efficiency of sequential computing solutions. So this is obviously wrong. There's a reason we parallelize things. They definitely do improve the efficiency. It's just not always, but rarely is a, a bad choice word here. So finally, the actual answer, uh, we get it by elimination, but let's look at it. It says the efficiency of a solution can be broken down into parallel portions is still limited by a sequential portion. So the reason this is wrong, and we can actually show this with an example here, let's look at our earlier example where we talked about somebody who was grading uh, a bunch of exams, right? And then they split up the task into five different people, and each of these people is grading the exams independently. In the end, they still need to combine all of their exams. So let's say they each add up their exams. You still have this last step right here. And no matter how efficient these steps in the middle become, they're still bottlenecked by this one step here at the end in which you have to combine all of the counts and give a total. So this is the bottleneck right here and it's a sequential portion of the algorithm and it's still just as important as the parallel parts. Now here's the thing. You might be saying, well, how can this be really slow? Well, you know, there could be a lot of reasons this might be slow. Maybe there's some reason why after everyone adds up their exams, they have to get together and combine it and coordinating that can be really hard. Uh, or there are th there's other reasons too. Maybe these four people add up their exams really, really quickly. Like maybe they do it in just five minutes, but for some reason, this last person here takes 10 minutes, right? That person is really slowing down everything and eventually they all have to add up their exams over here, so every one of them needs to complete their portion. So ultimately, we're gonna be bottlenecked by the sequential portion, which is this right here. Therefore, the answer to this problem is D, which is the efficiency of a solution can be broken down, but it's still limited by a sequential portion. Now here's a problem that deals with actual execution times, and the problem here, what it's asking us is, how can we pair up to parallelize these different tasks? So when you see a problem like this, what they're doing is they're giving us independent tasks. That means each of these tasks can run individually so they can be parallelized. But the question is, how do we best parallelize them? So generally we can split these up into pairs, right? And that generally the way that this ends up working out is that you wanna take the slowest task and the fastest tasks and pair them up. Here you will have Z and W. So if you do Z and W and X and Y, Z and W will take 50 seconds and then 20 seconds, right? So that's a sequential step in the parallelized portion. And then X and Y, you'll do maybe X and then Y. So that'll take 75 seconds, right? So the amount of time it'll take overall is gonna be 75 here. You can compare that to some of the other pairings. Let's look at some other ones. If you do W and X, right? W, X will be 50 seconds, right? 20 plus 30. But if you do Y and Z, this will be 95 seconds. That's quite a bit slower. So if you don't really know where to start here and you just want to do this by trial and error, what you can actually do is you can see how long it would take to do each of these. So maybe here, for example, this one says W and Y, you can just compute it here. W and Y is 65, right? 45 plus 20. And then X and Z is 80, right? So we already found a solution that takes 75. So this is slower because this one here is going to take 80. If we go through all of these, we'll see that the one that wins here is that first one that we tried where we pair up W and Z and X and Y. That would be C right here. Note, by the way, I mentioned earlier that the easiest way is generally to pair up the slowest and least slow tasks. Sometimes, most of the time that works, but it doesn't always work. Let me give you an example of where that wouldn't work. Let's say W, X, and Y all take 10 seconds. If these were all 10, then the best solution would actually be to pair these three up, to triple them up. So we have W, X, Y, and then Z, right? So this one would take 50, and these would just take 30. So the total here would be 50. So sometimes you're not just pairing them up. Sometimes it's actually faster to put them in trios, right? Like D suggests over here. But unfortunately, these aren't 10 each, right? They're 20, 30, and 45. So we don't have this option here. But keep in mind that that is sometimes an answer. Here's a very similar problem, but the phrasing of it is a little bit different. So this one asks, which of the following best approximates the difference in execution between running the two processes in parallel instead of running them one after another? So the answer is a little different. It's not just computing what the total runtime would be here. 
but what the difference in the runtime is. Let's actually figure this out. The easiest way to do this is actually just to get both numbers and compare them. So if you do this sequentially, you will do P followed by Q, and then you'll get your answer. So P here would be 30, and Q would be 45, and the total of that, of course, would be 75, right? So this would take 75 to seconds total. And now let's figure out what it would take to do this in parallel. In parallel, you would do P over here, and you would do Q at the same time over here, and this one would take 30, and this one would take 45. So we're gonna go at the speed basically of the slowest unit here, so this would take 45 seconds total, right? It doesn't matter how fast this one is. If this one's slower, we have to wait for this one. This is a sequential portion at the end, remember. So if we do them parallel, it'll take 45. So we're comparing 75 versus 45. That's a difference of 30, right? It's nice and simple. We just subtract these, right? The difference in time is just the bigger time minus the smaller time. So it's just 30. Therefore, the approximate difference in execution time is 30 seconds. When you see a problem like this, avoid trying to take shortcuts. Get the two numbers, get the sequential and get the parallel, and actually just straight up compare them. So the last problem that we're going to do here deals with the concept of speed up, which is a new topic that's also introduced in parallelism. Now, the speed up is actually something that I couldn't find any examples of online, so I just wrote my own here. And it's pretty simple to figure out what speed up is. But the idea of speed up in general is how much better is your parallel algorithm than your sequential algorithm? It's not usually doubling it by getting twice as many processors in there. In fact, the speed up will usually be less than how much you split up the task by. But let's look at what speed up actually is. Speed up, you can always get by dividing the amount of time it takes to do something sequential, so your sequential solution, divided by your parallel solution. So what does that mean? Let's look at this example here. This one here says that after running it sequentially, it'll take 15 seconds, but if you split it up and run it in parallel, it'll take five seconds. So what is the speed up of this solution? Well, the formula is right above us, so you take the amount of time it takes to do sequentially, 15, and you divide it by the amount of time it takes you to do it in parallel, five, and that's three. So a lot of people will inadvertently try to subtract these. They'll say, oh, the speed up is how many more seconds you get. So they'll think that the answer is A, but it's not. The answer is actually the ratio. It's by how, mu by how much proportionally do you improve your solution? And the answer to that is three. Just remember that sequential divided by parallel, that's your speed up. <laughs>